Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Gutenberg. In this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to implement some uh, custom attributes here, especially like how to change colors for the elements that we created in our custom block. From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is the best page builder for WordPress. Super light, scalable, and with an intuitive interface, Elementor will help you build professional looking websites in few minutes. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So in our previous lesson, we saw how to use the rich text in order to define a couple of custom attributes and then dynamically generate the markup and then save it and declare their markup in our front end, as usual, the shenanigans of Gutenberg. Let's continue by recreating that functionality that Gutenberg has by default. For example, if we uh, write something in our paragraph, uh, write something, blah, blah, blah. And then in the paragraph, when this paragraph, a built-in uh, Gutenberg block, it's selected you can see here in the right block panels like the attributes panel you can edit the font size you can have a drop cap and then you can change the color settings in order to have the background color or change the text color itself so let's see how to implement this color setting section in our title First of all, in the list of attributes, we need to define the new attribute that is gonna store the custom color of our title. So here we can define something called title color. And also in this case, it's an object. And let's remember the comma at the end of this object. And here we need to define the type of the attribute that we wanna store. Also in this case, this is a string because we're gonna save the string of the color that we're gonna use. And then we can define a default attribute because of course the color, we don't want it to be empty. And a default attribute can be whatever you want. You can be the uh, hexadecimal value of the color, or we can simply type black because this is a uh, CSS recognize this as a color, so it's totally fine. Now, if we scroll down, we can tap that as an attribute, of course. So let's type comma and then title color. Let's declare this. So we're tapping the title color from the attributes that we declared before. And we need to, in order to let our title update the color itself, we need to specify these as an inline style CSS attribute. So whenever we change the color, the rich text color changes as well. So here, right after the onChange method, we can specify something like style equal and inside the curly brackets, we can specify a series of custom attributes in the style. And this is also kind of weird React thing. So we open the curly brackets we, because we need to use our custom variable, but then we need to specify an array of attributes, an array of CSS attributes inside these curly brackets. So we need to open once again the curly brackets and specify which CSS attributes we wanna edit. In our case, we wanna edit the color that is gonna be equal to the title color. Perfect. Now that we did that though, uh, this doesn't actually implement any customization. So it's not gonna magically make the color panel to the right appear whenever we select our H2 tag. We need to actually do it manually. We need to implement it manually in order to implement these and hook it up to our title color value. So in order to do that, we need to use a lot of built-in markup of Gutenberg. And this is gonna be kind of overwhelming. So first of all, we need to import a lot of attributes from the WP editor in the same way we did from the rich text. So let's go here and let's start writing something in line here. So we can define from the rich text here. After the rich text, we need to import also the inspector control. That's actually the control panel to the right. And we need to use this markup element in order to tap that section and uh, print whatever we want in that section. And then we need the color palette, which is the actual custom palette, the custom section that allows us to tap the built-in color palette of Gutenberg. And then we need to specify in another constant variable that is not part of the WP editor, but it's part of the WP components that it's called the panel body, which is that drop down thing that we open and close like this one. This is a panel body. And in order to use it, in order to have this built-in functionality, we need to import it from the WP dot components components 
library. And also in this case, we need to import this components library from PHP in the list of dependencies in our array when we register the Gutenberg script. So WP dash components. Let's be sure to not make any typos or these won't work. Let's go back in our JavaScript here. Now we define pretty much everything that we need. Now let's scroll down and in our return edit here, right before the CTA container, all this thing will not be generated or printed in the page itself, but in the right panel, in order to tap that, we need to use the inspector control that we just tapped. And actually here it's inspector controls. Sorry, let's be sure to write the names properly. And these names are sometimes confusing, but let's define a custom style here. And the style that I want to define, once again, I need the double curly brackets, is the margin uh, bottom attribute and the margin bottom, I want something like 40 pixel. And I'm doing this just to have enough space in order to make this more readable, but you can avoid this if you don't care, it's fine. Automatically, let's close the inspector controls and the inspector control doesn't have to include our CTA container. These two things are completely separated. This is what comes in the page. This is what comes in the right panel. Inside here, we need to define a panel body element. So let's open our markup panel body and we can give it a title and the title has to come as a value and a string. So we need to open the curly brackets and define the string with single quotes. I know this is super confusing, but whatever. So let's call this font color settings or whatever you want. Like you can use title color, uh, body color, just define the name as you want. Here, let's close the panel body tags. And inside here, we can finally define our section with the title and the color palette that is going to affect the actual title color. So first of all, let's define a paragraph tag. And inside here, we can use a strong tag and define a select uh, a title a color or something like that. And this is totally my thing. Like that's, that's how I like to do it in order to kind of like simulate the same style of WordPress, the same style of this panel. But of course you can write up however you want. You can use an H tag or you can use your own custom CSS in order to style this section and make it more customized to your brand identity, however you want. And here after the title, we can tap finally the color palette. And the color palette is gonna have a value that it's equal to our title color that if I'm not wrong, we defined here in the list of attributes. Yes, perfect. And also in this case, when something changes, so on change in the color palette, we are gonna call a custom attribute or a custom method called on title color change, or you can call it however you want. And let's close, self close the color palette. We don't need to uh, close the markup. Let's self close it. Let's declare these method here, basically in the same way that we did this function on title color change, we're going to receive the new color because the color palette is going to simply pass the string of the new color selected. And we can do exactly the same here, set the attributes and the attributes that we want to tap. It's of course the title color, then it's going to be equal to the new color. Perfect. If we save these and let's remember to check our terminal for uh, errors. And in fact, we have a parse error here. Where is happening the div CTA container? Oh, sorry, I forgot. We need a comma here because this is a completely different container and we are using the curly brackets to specify a list of uh, basically an array or like we're returning an object of multiple lines. So this is the first line with our inspector control. This is the second line. So we need a comma. If we save these and we open our uh, terminal, this is properly generated. So we resolved the issue and the uh, compiled assets was properly compiled. So let's continue. If we save these and we go in our um, administration area, we update, we refresh this page with our custom block. If we select this custom block, look what happened here automatically because we specify the inspector element we have our font color setting with the title that we specify our panel body 
like we did, and we're using the color palette, so automatically we have all the built-in functionality of Gutenberg, and look what happened. When I change these, the title changes accordingly. That's perfect. If we update this and we refresh in the administration area, this is, remember, it's recognized, so we properly saved our method, our set attribute method works. But if we open this post in the front end here, it's not changed because, of course, we didn't update the save method. So if we go back in our code editor and we scroll down in the save, we need to do basically exactly the same. We need to tap the title color variable and specify it after the body. And then here in our h2 title, we can simply write style that is going to be equal to, once again, double curly brackets, color, it's equal to title color. Let's go back in our backend here. Let's update something. Let's update this. Let's refresh. The usual problem, because we changed our save block, so this doesn't match. And let's just delete this thing, because it's easier. Update. Let's refresh this page. Let's create a new block, call to action, title, and description, whatever, and then the title, I want it to be red, then update, perfect, let's refresh this page, everything is good, still editable, it works, if we go in the front end, let's refresh, look at that, we have the title with the color and the description, so everything is customizable, we saw how to use the custom color palette sidebar panel of Gutenberg and we saw how to use it in the front end accordingly. So why don't you do exactly the same but for the body? The method is exactly the same, you just need to declare another attribute, uh, import it here from the attributes, uh, create the updating method and then specifying another section in the panel body font color settings to have another color palette, but in this case it's gonna have the body color and on change you need to update on change method, of course. If you don't know how to do it or it doesn't work, no worries. In the next lesson, I'm gonna show you the final code and you can always check my source code from my GitHub repository. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and until the next one, as usual, happy coding.